Morant with a running start. Elevate! Oh, oh, it does! Oh, oh my goodness! Oh. He's done tie game in overtime. Gasol will turn his heat. It's gone! It's Gasol Seven tenths remain. Only now a three. Count it! A 15 point play for Memphis. And Blake Griffin gets into it on the floor with Randolph. Hard to tell if there are any punches being thrown under there, but Griffin took exception. Adams going long. Morant! Oh, he hit it! He hit it! He hit it! John Morant! Insanity! You gotta be kidding me. Welcome to Grits and Grinds, a Memphis Grizzlies podcast. Grizzlies win edition. My name is Keith Parrish. The Grizzlies defeated the Toronto Raptors on the road on Monday night. It was a win led by Jaron Jackson Jr. that also had big contributions from Luke Kennard, Vince Williams Jr., John Conchar, and more. The Grizzlies improved their road record to 12-12. and I'm going to get into the game on this episode. Before I do, just a reminder, if you live anywhere close to Nashville, Tennessee, come on out this Friday night for a Grizzlies watch party. I'm going to be at Nobles Beer Hall on Friday, January 26th for the Grizzlies Magic Game. I will be giving away lots of Grizzlies prizes. So if you live in Middle Tennessee, come on down to Nobles Beer Hall, watch the game with other Grizzlies fans. I will see you there. All right. The Grizzlies held the Raptors to 100 points. They are now 5-0 when holding their opponent to 100 points or less. The Grizzlies, I felt like, did a much better job with their shot selection in this game. They attacked in the inside over and over. And also helping that was the Grizzlies tied their season high with 19 offensive rebounds. A game after having three offensive rebounds, they had 19 in this one. Very impressive rebounding totals. That might just be some random variance, game-to-game variance, but I think a lot of it was heavily emphasizing these lineups that had John Conchar playing, that had Vince Williams Jr. playing, Xavier Tillman returned and played in this game, so you didn't have to do as many Small ball lineups, you could usually have a couple of either Jaron, Santi, or Xavier Tillman out there. And even when you didn't, you had David Roddy stepping up. David Roddy, who I weirdly started the show with yesterday, David Roddy had a career-high nine rebounds. He had a career-high six offensive rebounds, and David was working hard on the inside. But let's start with the big picture stuff, which individually goes to Jaron Jackson Jr. Jaron got off to an unbelievable start in the first quarter of this game. He became the first player on record. These records go back to 1996-1997, where we actually had the quarter-by-quarter, play-by-play data. But first player in the last nearly 30 years to record 16 points and six steals in a quarter. Jaron had a career-high six steals And he got them all in the first quarter. He tied the NBA's record for most steals in a quarter. Again, those records only go back to 96-97. We don't have the breakdowns about what each player did per quarter before then. But just a monster first quarter helped the Grizzlies get out to an early lead. And then Jaron finishes the game with those six steals. But also, he had 27 points. He also picked up five Assists, again, this is the first time in Jaron's career he's had consecutive games with five assists. Coming into this season, as a reminder, coming into this season, actually coming into this month, Jaron Jackson Jr. had two games in his career in the regular season where he posted at least five assists. He's now done it four times this month, including back-to-back games. His final stat line, 27 points, four rebounds, five assists, six steals, one block. An incredible game from Jaron Jackson Jr., who once again had to carry the large offensive burden on his own shoulders. Like, this was not necessarily a totally clean victory. I mean, the Grizzlies were ahead the whole game. 
I'm pretty sure it was a wire to wire win, but like the offense finally bogged down in the fourth quarter and the Grizzlies only scored. I think they only scored nine points over the last seven minutes, but there were a couple of Jaron Jackson Jr. Buckets where it was basically, Hey, just go one-on-one. That's all our offense is go one-on-one against Scotty Barnes. And they are going to be sending help. A lot of guys are going to be pinching in trying to stop you, Jaron. But Jaron was dominant enough where he was able to score in those situations. So Jaron continues playing very, very well. And then Luke Kennard had a season-high 19 points and a season-high 7 assists. He kept up his hot shooting, although the percentages weren't as good. Who cares? He took 13 three-pointers. He made five of them. Luke... Only player on the team, in my opinion, that should have the full uh, green light to shoot anytime he wants. Luke was letting him fly, and that is a good job by Luke. Also, the assists, he was setting guys up, and these weren't just like the simple, I'm going to throw it to a guy on the perimeter, then the guy on the perimeter is going to make a move and score. No, like... Luke was actually assisting guys for layups, and I've been a little bit critical of Luke at times. I was super let down in the win against the Warriors on MLK Day and the previous games against the Clippers and Knicks. I was just let down with, like, how ineffective Luke was when the other team kind of, like, guarded him closely. I know he's a specialist. I know he is maybe the best shooter in the NBA. But, like, I couldn't get over how, like, Brandon Podzimski could shut him down. Like, you can't get past pods. So I was watching him play, and we're so shorthanded, and we need guards, and we need playmaking and creation. And I'm looking, I'm like, can you really not get by anybody? But I don't know if they've schemed better for him to get open, if he has just maybe taken the challenge of, like, I got to do a better job dribbling the basketball and, you know, making the defense bend sometimes. And he really did the last couple of games, last few games, he's done a good job um, for him of setting guys up. And you saw that reflected with that season-high seven assists. And now next, I think I want to give credit to the coaching staff for actually adjusting the rotation. I mean, they got the benefit of Xavier Tillman returning, from that injury, but some of the times the games had really fallen apart of late, it was times the Grizzlies had their entire bench essentially on the court, and they didn't do that this game. Specifically against the Timberwolves and the Bulls, there was this moment in each of those games where you're like, why is Zaire Williams, David Roddy, Gigi Jackson, and Jacob Gilliard all on the court at the same time. Well, guess what? They didn't put them all on the court on the same time in the first half. In the first half, they let Jaron and Vince play the entire first quarter. So when Roddy and Zaire checked in together, and I got all nervous and anxious that they were playing together, um, they got to play those minutes alongside arguably the best two players on the Grizzlies, Vince and Jaron. And then when Vince and Jaron subbed out for the start of the second quarter, Roddy and Zaire subbed out as well. And to start the second quarter, you brought in Santi Aldama, you brought in Gigi Jackson, you brought in Xavier Tillman, and then you had Gilliard and Luke Kennard. And I think the stability that Aldama and Tillman provide, even if they are not having very good seasons, I at least trust them somewhat. And I feel like with that front court on a second unit, that provides some stability. Then you got Luke Kennard in there. Gilliard, for whatever he is, he plays under control. And so I thought that was a good decision by the coaching staff to not go with the full bench lineup. Now, they sort of did this at the start of the fourth quarter. I got very nervous. They did put Jacob Gilliard, David Roddy, Gigi Jackson, Zaire Williams, and Jaron on the court at the same time. The Grizzlies were up 14 to start the fourth quarter. Now, first play of the fourth quarter, Zaire Williams feeds Gigi Jackson for a very impressive and athletic layup, an above-the-rim layup. So that was a big play. A couple possessions later, Jaron hits a skip pass to Jacob Gilliard for a corner three. And that stretched the lead out to 19. And just... Scoring on two of your first three possessions extended the lead. It helps you buy that extra time with these not preferred lineups on the court. Then you basically, you know, 
burnt the next four minutes. It didn't go great. By the time that, that lineup checked out, uh, you actually got outscored by one, but it didn't matter. Just scoring a couple of points and enduring those like four minutes or so was good enough, and then the Grizzlies were able to hold on to the win. So good job, I felt like, adjusting the rotation. And also, I mean, we can talk about Gigi Jackson. Like, good job playing Gigi Jackson the most minutes of all the bench players. Gigi Jackson is still so raw, but Gigi had a really good game. Gigi, eight points, five rebounds, an assist, a steal, and a block. And the plays he made in this one were impactful and impressive. The block he got was awesome. He blocked a dunk of Jonte Porter. His first rebound, I know a lot of rebounds are just anyone who's standing there will get them. No, no, no. His first rebound was a rebound in traffic where he skied over everybody. That's a rebound like maybe Xavier Tillman does not get. Gigi is showing his athleticism in these rebounding plays, in that block. Also, he had a huge dunk in the first half. He's making another three-pointer. Gigi looks ready, and he needs to keep getting utilized. Just numerous big plays from the NBA's youngest player in this one. So he, he gets 21 minutes, and I really felt like he made the most of those minutes with his impact on the game. Now, I haven't even really mentioned Vince Williams Jr. and John Conchar yet, outside of their contributions to the team racking up a nice rebounding game. Vince, I mean, what more can you say? First career double-double, 18 points, 10 rebounds, an assist, two steals, and a block. The three-pointers are still falling. He made two out of his four three-point attempts. Also, when this game got close, not close, when this game bogged down, Vince came through with two of the Grizzlies' final three baskets. He had a putback with four minutes left, put the Grizzlies up 14. Then, with two minutes left, he was isolated on Grady Dick. Blows by Grady Dick with like a double crossover with a huge dunk. It was the Grizzlies' final basket with two minutes left. Um, put him up 12. That was the hammer nail coffin. This baby's over. Did he carry the basketball? Of course. Definitely not a legal move. I could care less. Vince was amazing once again. And I just like to reemphasize, I'm still blown away every game that he's this good. I keep waiting for the bubble to burst. Where I'm like, maybe he's not that good. Now, so far he's been absolutely amazing. I'm confused why other teams aren't doing more to try to stop him. He was awesome in this one. Also having a great game. John Conchar. John Conchar with the career-high five blocked shots. What was so fun about this game, I mean, basically all wins are sort of unexpected at this point, but like the Grizzlies got, I would say, you got like a full Jaron game. I mean, what can you complain about? I know there's weirdos out there who be like, he only got four rebounds. You're weird. He had 27 points, six steals, and five assists. You're weird. If you're bothered by his rebound numbers. But we got a full Jaron game. We got a full Luke Kennard game. We got a full Vince Williams Jr. game. We got a full Conchar game. All those guys, just elite contributions to this victory. Conchar's line is just special. I mean, five blocks, of course. Four assists. Five rebounds. That's just nasty. Good job by Conchar in that starting role, just doing everything that was needed for the Grizzlies. Now, Roddy, I already pointed out his great rebounding numbers. Now, if you want to poke a hole in that, he sort of got three or four of his six offensive rebounds on the same play, where he was just trying to tap the ball in the basket and failed each time. It's why he ended with a pretty bad shooting line, four out of 12 from the field, most of those misses were him trying to tap the ball in the basket on one play. So I'm not mad about the shooting percentage, but I am very excited about one particular aspect of David Roddy's game. In this 
matchup against the Raptors. Four out of 12 from the field. All 12 field goal attempts were two-pointers. On yesterday's show, talking about the Bulls game, I explicitly said, David, stop shooting so many three-pointers. Nick Vucevic was daring him to shoot three-pointers. David Roddy is a bad above-the-break three-point shooter. I said, just take it inside. Drive every time. You can drive past centers who are daring you to shoot. Well, I don't think David Roddy is a listener, but David Roddy apparently got the message and took all 12 of his field goal attempts inside the arc. Just keep attacking. Great game from Roddy. Eight points, nine rebounds, two assists, and was a beast inside. That specifically is what I want to see from David Roddy. Now, Santi Aldama started this game. There was some thought, or I had the thought, that with Xavier Tillman back, all right, we'll go back to Xavier Tillman starting lineup since it didn't work super well against the Bulls. But they left Santi in there. I'm totally fine with that decision. I feel like this team, if you have Vitz and Conchar as like your two and three, by all means, let's lean on a more offensively capable guy, a guy who is a shooter, and I think Santi fits the bill. So I like Santi starting still. His game, once again, mixed results. He had 10 points, four assists, and four rebounds. I thought he had a couple of shots that really bothered me. I mean, he he airmailed a quarter three-pointer. It was a good shot. It was open. But, like, why is he so bad at shooting corner threes this year? He made one in the second half that was great to see, but, like, he's shooting, like, around 25% on corner threes. That doesn't make any sense. Then um, he had a three-pointer he took on a, Four on two fast break. Like he pulled up for an above the break three. And I'm not blaming Santi specifically for the shot. I feel like we have to blame the coaching staff. Every player on the team does this. I don't understand when you're a 33% three point shooter getting the green light to shoot a pull up three pointer. It's a four on two fast break. Go get a layup. Also, the long rebound. Ended up in the Raptors' hands. They got a breakaway dunk going the other way. So, like, I thought that was a super strange decision by Santi. I mean, notably, the Grizzlies did hold their lead while Santi was in there in that second quarter where Jaron was on the bench. But I don't know. I still, I guess, was super sensitive about that Santi transition three-pointer because in the last episode, I was just talking about our shot selection. It was so poor. And um, good job by Santi, I guess. Rest of the game, he made a quarter three. He had a dunk. He left this one. Um, he banged knees, I believe, with Scotty Barnes. And so hopefully he's not added to the injury report for the game against the Heat on Wednesday. Um, because of, I feel like, uh, maybe Roddy not shooting three-pointers. For whatever reason, the Grizzlies only took 34 threes. This going back to my... Um, maybe be more judicious with your shot selection. That means now the Grizzlies are seven and five this year when they take under 35 three point attempts. So nine and 22 when you take more than 35 three point attempts. I mean, it's all about, for me, it's all about diversifying your offense and scoring in the paint. And oh, by the way, most of our shooters are bad. So stop shooting three pointers. So it's a chicken of the egg thing, I think, based on how many three-pointers you're attempting most of the time. And so if you're able to score inside, if you're able to get 19 offensive rebounds, well, then you can finish with 58 points in the paint as opposed to the 34 points in the paint you had against the Bulls. But it still feels like most of the time, hey, do what Roddy did last game. Drive towards the bucket. When in doubt, just drive. Um, figure the rest out later. All right, let's wrap up. Um, who haven't I talked about? Oh. Let's talk about Zaire Williams. Okay. I wouldn't call this a good game from Zaire. The good plays that I remember, he made a three-pointer in the fourth quarter. All threes in the fourth quarter. Definitely needed and important. He got fouled on a three-pointer at the end of the third quarter. That was, you know, an important play in the game. And he set up GG with that nice pass to start the fourth quarter. Also, I remember a couple of unnecessary turnovers. He only played 13 minutes, so I, I'm fine with it. I mean, he's just struggling. He's struggling out there. And with the players available, it's okay that um, he wasn't 
asked to do more and it's okay that he played and we just have to i guess live with uh live with zaire cross our fingers that things go well when he's out there and with that i think we can wrap it up just a great overall fun victory excellent games from jaron from vince from luke from conchar good strong performance from david roddy oh gilliard i haven't mentioned gilliard um he made that big three in the fourth quarter had five points in 13 minutes um the grizzlies are back at it on wednesday against the miami heat that's on the road then they returned home where they have not won yet this season on a friday or saturday night but they're playing the magic at home on Friday, if you're in Memphis, go to the game. If you're not in Memphis, come to Nashville. Come to Nobles Beer Hall. Hang out with me. Let's watch the Grizzlies together. Anyways, thanks for listening to the show. If you want to support the creation of this show, if you want to join my listener Slack channel, if you want to get some bonus content, do all of that at patreon.com slash fastbreakbreakfast. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Write me a five-star review in whatever podcast app you are listening to this in. All right. Hope you have a great Tuesday. I'll talk to you soon. Go Grizz!